as I always say, the Bible, especially the Old Testament Bible, is full of exciting stories and events. And one such exciting story, it is the story of David, young David versus Goliath. And the question is, why did God put this story in the Bible? Why was the story of David versus Goliath placed in God's book, the Bible? Remember, no story was re recorded in the Bible just to entertain us. I always say that many times we misinterpret biblical stories like this because we get too excited and we get carried away with the entertainment because most of these stories, they're like you're watching a movie, a heroic movie. But that's not the purpose why God placed these stories in the Bible. There is always a message. Remember, the Bible is God's book. The story that is in the Bible, it is the story of God. Of course, man is the highest beneficiary. But the Bible, it is the story of God. Anybody who tells you or thinks that man, the story of the Bible is about man doesn't know the Bible. The Bible is God's story. Man is only the beneficiary of God's redemptive program and God's grace. So every time you are reading the Bible here, pay attention when you are reading these stories and events because it's very easy to miss the message. And the other mistake that we do, sometimes we focus, we become obsessed with the wrong heroes and miss the real hero. Which brings the question to say, who was the real hero in this story of David versus Goliath? Context and details will tell us the truth. Always pay attention to details and never be lazy to read the entire story. I always say that one of the mal practices that a lot of us perpetrate is that we cherry pick stories of our interest. We, we only isolate verses, passages which we prefer. And the rest, where the whole story comes from, we don't pay attention. We don't actually care. Or even in the aftermath, we don't even care. That's why we miss the meaning. No verse in the Bible, no story in the Bible, no passage in the Bible stands alone. They are always within a bigger picture. So seek to understand the bigger picture. Today, as we look at the bigger picture, beyond this event of David versus Goliath, you will realize, you will understand the real reason why this story was recorded in the Bible, God's book. So let's go together. The story of David versus Goliath is in 1 Samuel chapter 17. But for the sake of context, I will take you back to chapter 16 and chapter 15. Because that's the context. The story of the fight between David and Goliath was not an isolated incident per se. If you really want to understand why it was recorded in the Bible, it happened in a bigger story, a story of God. So let me show you two incidents that will show us the context in which David fought Goliath. Then we'll realize, we'll see the real hero in this story of David versus Goliath. Let me take you backwards of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse number 25. Listen. 1 Samuel 15, verse 25 says, Now therefore, Please, that is King Saul. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and retain with me that I may bow before the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not retain with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord. And as a result, the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. Listen to verse 27. As Samuel turned to go away, Saul seized, grabbed the skirt of his robe, and the robe tore. And suddenly, Samuel spoke a prophecy, confirmed something. Because on verse 28 says, And Samuel now, after his robe was torn by King Saul, Samuel said to him, Just as you have done that, it's a demonstration. The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day. And he has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. That's where the story of David begins. Everything that follows after begins from here. It, it, it comes from this backdrop. Another incident that happened. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? 
Sins have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his, his sons. And you know the entire story. This is the context of David fighting versus Goliath. What, what is going on here? Saul has been rejected as king of Israel. So, God only showed Samuel that Saul is finished, but he never told him the next king for Israel. All the time, as Samuel was still grieving to say, who is going to be the next king of Israel? Oh, who is going to, to, to succeed Saul? As he was complaining and worrying, God calls him and says, go to Jesse. You will anoint one of his sons. And when, you know, Samuel argued to say, God, you know, what if Sam, I mean, King Saul hears about this and I've anointed, he's going to become furious. So because of that, if you observe the passage, David was anointed king over Israel privately, secretly. And I would believe that even the, the brothers of David did not see that ceremony. Maybe they did it in a private room. Because you know that Samuel, when he was going there to the household of Jesse, he went there under the disguise of offering a sacrifice to God together with Jesse. So people thought this was just a sacrifice. They are worshipping God. But privately, Samuel anointed David as king of Israel. Now the big question is, how can you anoint a king over a nation in private? Without people witnessing and accepting that new king. But that's what God did privately. Another question would be, how would the people of Israel accept David when he was just a little young boy and he was ordained, anointed, without the people of Israel witnessing the ordination ceremony or the inauguration? It doesn't work that way in society. That's why after David was anointed king of Israel, God created a scenario, created a platform to introduce David to the highest office in Israel, to introduce David to national publicity, national significance. After he had ordained him, anointed him privately in a room without the nation witnessing. So God arranged by his sovereign power, he arranged that David must go to the battlefield, even though he went there as somebody, an errand's boy, to deliver foodstuffs to the soldiers in the army. God made sure that David should be there at the right time. In other words, God set up David to be there at the right time and at the right moment when Goliath came up and he was shouting insults. And God, whilst all the soldiers were afraid, intimidated, God gave David unusual faith to face the enemy that was intimidating everybody. It was God setting him up as a way of introducing the new king of Israel without any issues. That's why after slaying Goliath, because Goliath was blasphemous and God had judged him. That was the judgment of God. But God had to use the same judgment of Goliath to elevate David, a young man, to national significance, to national fame. And that's why immediately, by the time they were coming from the war, the whole nation, the Bible tells us that people from the cities, they had already begun to see that Saul has slaughtered his, 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 his thousands, thousands. But David has slaughtered tens of thousands. The purpose of God, the plan of God had been accomplished. That now, even before David came back from that battlefield, he was already accepted nationwide. He was already famous nationwide. So if you ask me, the, the, the fight between David versus Goliath, I do not think that David was the real hero. The real hero was God. It was God who set him up in, all, in that victory. Because God had rejected Saul and he had chosen David, a man with whom he would establish a covenant, a covenant of royalty. Because God made a covenant with David to say, your son, your sons, 
will always be king forever, eternally. That's why, that's even why Jesus came under the lineage of David. Jesus is the son of David. As he entered into Jerusalem on that court, little donkey, what did they say? Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna to the, the son of David. By the way, the, the word Hosanna actually means save us now. So they were praising Jesus as the son of David. But it started when God had rejected Saul and anointed David and set him up to judge, to slaughter Goliath. So that at the same time, he can come to national significance. Already accepted, easily accepted as the new king for Israel. God was the real hero. He's the real hero. Whenever you look at this story of David versus Goliath. Stay blessed as we continue to study God's way together. And please do me a favor. Subscribe, follow, and recommend this page, this channel. Your sake of friends.